I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on logarithms. In this video, we'll begin with what are logarithms. We'll actually make a connection between logarithms and exponential functions, and that will help us to understand this topic entirely. We'll also talk about properties of logarithms, and I'll give you the proof of these properties as we go along. Once we have understood the properties, we can easily convert exponential equations into logarithms, vice versa, and evaluate logarithms. We'll have a few examples uh, for doing so. Normally, calculators are able to find logarithms to the base 10, which are called common logarithms, right? So, so whenever you see just log, log, it is to the base 10, and the natural logs are ln, which is to the base e. We'll also see their significance and how do we do some simple start startup problems solution using a few examples. So let's begin with uh, addressing uh, what are logarithms. So I'll take this opportunity to uh, sketch graph of exponential functions first. And from there, we know inverse of exponential function is logarithm, right? So simple as that. So exponential function graph normally will be always increasing kind of like this. And generally, if I write this uh, graph as uh, uh, y equals, let me write here, y equals to b to the power of x, right? So in that case, we know that here, the domain is all real numbers. Uh, but there are some restrictions on b, and that is that b is actually greater than 0, and b is not equal to 1, right? So these are two restrictions on b. Logarithms, as I said, is basically inverse of exponential functions. So to find the inverse, we have to reflect the graph on the line which is y equals to x. So let us say this is the line which is y equals to x. If I reflect it on this particular line, now this is which is a horizontal asymptote will become the vertical asymptote. The y intercept will become the x intercept. So what you have here is kind of like this. So always increasing graph which you get here and this will be your vertical asymptote, right? So this graph which you get is basically the graph of inverse of this. So when I'm writing y equals to b to the power of x, inverse is to swap x and y, right? So I could write this as x equals to b to the power of y. Do you see that part? So, so that is what logarithmic graph is, right? So what we learn from here is that we'll write in short, we just write log for logarithms. So log is inverse of exponential function. Is that clear? And both are functions, right? So, so that is the basic thing. And inverse helps you to find the values, correct? So reverse values. So that is the beauty. So if you have anything like b to the power of x, we can find the value of x using logarithms. Well, still, what I've written here is an exponential form of the equation, right? So, uh, so generally, what we do here is we write this particular equation with the same base, and we write this as uh, log, as the name of the function. Base is b, right? So b of x and that is the value of y. So writing this inverse function as uh, what it inverse function is, y is equal to log to the base b of x. Now this is exactly same as what I have written here, which is x equals to b to the power of y. So these two are same things. Okay. okay. Now I hope this concept is clear to you. Let's talk about some characteristics of our logarithmic functions. So directly, since it is inverse, we get many uh, characteristics from here. 
mainly we'll talk about horizontal asymptote right so we'll write exponential functions here so for an exponential function uh, as x approaches negative infinity y approaches 0 from the positive side for a logarithmic function when x approaches 0 from the positive side y approaches negative infinity so it flips do you see that so it just flips and that is how this end behavior is right now for an exponential function we have this particular point which is always at 0 1 right that's the origin so we have here the y intercept on the exponential function will be at 1 right so y intercept here on the logarithmic function it flips and so we have an x intercept which is at 1 0 it makes sense so that tells you that this is indeed a inverse of this function do you see that so it's kind of reflected and uh, you could take a mirror image kind of like this and get to the points perfect so that's how it is so these are some critical points which you need to understand as we go along and as far as the domain and range is concerned uh, as far as the uh, you know here also for b we have same restrictions on both the sides b value the base has to be non-negative but cannot be 1 since 1 to the power of x is not an exponential function it's a constant right so that's the problem okay so so that is uh, the major uh, property which we are looking into as far as domain and range is concerned for exponential function the domain is x belongs to real numbers and the range is that the y value belongs to real numbers however y is greater than zero here it flips so the domain here is x belongs to real numbers however the x value has to be greater than zero right so what you expect from inverse exactly what you have here right so this is precisely what i'm trying to say right so so y belongs to uh, real numbers there is no restriction on the range of exponential functions do you see that part so let's have another look at this equation and we'll describe this so we are writing x is equals to b to the power of y which is exactly same as y is equal to log of base b right so log of base b of x correct now here what you notice is that we have y is the exponent right so in this case y is the exponent so exponent is exponent is this y correct so that is treated as the exponent and the base is b and the base is is this b correct base is b so so more or less you can now define logarithm as the logarithm y y is the exponent to which the base b must be raised to give the value x correct so the logarithm y is the exponent logarithm y is the exponent to which the base b must be raised to give the value of x do you understand the concept so that is how we actually define logarithms perfect so i hope this concept is absolutely clear uh, and be more clear as we take up some simple examples so now let's talk about some properties of logarithms right you can see many of them here 
just as we have properties of exponential functions we have some properties and then we'll also talk about rules in the following videos so here when we talk about properties of logarithm there are a few common things which we'll be considering uh, log will always be written as log and the base could will is normally written here so we have log uh, what is the value of log to the base b of 1 right so i like you to uh, answer these questions what should be log to the base b of 1 what should be log to the base b of uh, 0 what could be log to the base b of b to the power of x and there is one exponential term we use b to the power of log to the base b of x is equal to what so i like you to actually uh, pause the video and answer these we'll actually go through some derivations of the proof and then once we have the proof we'll know exactly what these values are from the graph you must have seen some of these values already correct now let's look into them one by one right so when we are saying log to the base b of 1 so let's say we'll do, do it something like this we have log to the base b of 1 we don't know what this is let it be t correct now if i want to write this in exponential form then what will i do i'll write this as 1 equals to b to the power of t correct now 1 is equal to b to the power of t that means what that means t has to be 0 right so that that is only possible if we have 0 here right so that means t is equal to 0 so in the first case we assume that log to the base b of 1 is t and we found that t is equal to 0 so we can fill in 0 here right so log to the base b of 1 for any base log of 1 is 0 that's what we're trying to figure out is that clear to you right now the second one which we wrote is not 0 that is not possible we'll take this later uh, we'll take this later right so let me write here log to the base b of 0 right? but first let's look into log to the base b of b okay. so so we got the first one now second one uh, let's say we have log to the base b of b. We don't know what this is. Let it be t. We'll write this in exponential terms. We say b equals to b to the power of t. So that is the exponential form of logarithms, correct? Now that is possible only by comparing the exponents, right? Strictly speaking, as you can see, t is equal to 1. So we can write this as 1. Is that clear to you? So see, we are providing you with the proof so the first one was for log to the base b of 1 and this one is for log to the base b of p okay now let's take the third one which is uh, so we'll adopt the same method actually so we have log to the base b of b to the power of x and we don't know what this is so let this be equal to uh, let's say again t right okay no harm let this be t so writing this in exponential form we get b to the power of x is b to the power of t now b is the same base exponent is x and t that means x is equal to t so t is x for us so we get x here is that clear to you so i have done the derivation for log to the base b of b to the power of x correct so we get x as the result it makes sense log to the base b of b is 1 right so this is kind of a power rule right now uh, let's consider the next two so we have done first three let us consider this one which is uh, b log is in the exponent right now we could write this as as let me write this time because this is base we are working log to the base b of x as t so i'll write this as b to the power of t so the whole thing i wrote as b to the power of t now that means what that means that log to the base b of x is equal to t 
and that means writing it back into exponential form x is equals to b to the power of t so what we have done here is if you look into these two we first said that b to the power of something is b to the power of t and now we are saying b to the power of t is x that means this has to be x correct so this has to be x so we get x once again here do you see that part of the proof okay now let's get back to the last one which is log to the base b of 0 well this is not defined right so if you write this as uh, we'll prove this okay let's prove it uh, we'll do a small proof for this also of 0 so we say we don't know what this is let it be t then we are saying that means 0 is equals to b over t well exponential functions are greater than 0 right so that is uh, not possible since exponential functions the range is greater than 0 they are never 0 right it's a horizontal asymptote for them and therefore this is not defined so is that clear to you so with this we have got our five uh, basic rules right so once again I'll again uh, sketch uh, the logarithmic function graph here just to remind you how it looks like right so it is kind of like this right so clearly what you see here is that we have a vertical asymptote right which is which is x equals to 0 correct we have this very critical point which is your x intercept which is always at 1 right so 1 0 perfect so these are very important points and now let me also take help of two other points which are very critical and those two points which we'll use in graphing later will be that those points are inverse of your uh, base right so what we learned from here log b of b is 1 right so so if this point is b then that point here will be 1 that is what we are trying to say do you see this part so so if if my base is b so log b of b is equal to 1 do you see that part log b of 1 is 0 perfect do you get that part right and if I have b to the power of x in that case we'll get this as x and this is going to help us to evaluate logarithms so other properties we are going to see soon when we look into examples and which is we have seen that logarithms are inverse of exponential functions to solve exponential functions we can use logarithms and to solve logarithmic equations we can use exponential functions right so these are the characteristics which are mentioned on this page we also saw some rules of logarithms right and fortunately we had proof for each with this proof you must have understood why we get these values correct and why zero log b of zero is not defined right because exponential functions do not give you zero their values is always greater than zero right 